Elizabeth Gordon McKim is a poet, spoken word performance artist, editor, and teacher of poetry for people of all ages. And she's been a member of graduate faculty at Lesley University for over 40 years. And she has been a teacher and a mentor to teachers to bring more poetry in the classroom all over the United States, as well as at Lesley. Her poems have appeared in many magazines, reviews, and journals. And she is author of eight collections of poetry and co-author of One Guide for Teaching Poetry. She is also editor of an international journal of poetry at the European Graduate School in Switzerland. Elizabeth's roots are in the oral tradition of song, story, and chant, and locally she is known as the jazz poet of Lynn, Massachusetts. Please help me welcome Elizabeth McKim. Well, it's really a pleasure to be here. This is uh, my maybe my third or fourth time uh, here. I first came out with Don White, who introduced me to this uh, Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. And it's, it's really such a special place. And I'm very pleased to be among you today. And, um, and I also, I just love uh, celebrating this oral tradition that we all belong to of song, story, and poem. And I think it's, and it's of course very fitting that um, that Bob Dylan got the Nobel Prize. So um, big praises to Bob. And I think this is really a great, um, it's just an honoring really of this whole tradition that is so uh, deep and so wide. And I do think that the oral tradition of song, story, and poem that goes across cultures and through time is also the most important bridge to reading and writing. So I don't think there's any um, separation between that. I think that's like a, 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 a very natural traveling. I have um, also worked for with children. I was in the first the pilot program in Massachusetts of poets in the public schools. So I've learned a lot from kids over the over the years of this oral tradition and um, reading your poems aloud and speaking out your poems. And this is a kalimba, you know, first uh, found in Africa. It's a gourd, um, made out of a gourd. This one was actually made up in Maine. Lovers in the Free Fall. When I first came here, I found my future free falling out of a blank sky. No moon, oblivion covering me like a tarp. Till, still, Slumbering and somehow lapsed, I slapped down and wised up. Wised up and then slapped down to the plausible earth. Rising up too late for my rescue, revealing our true impartial partnership, like an open trap, like a well-used map. Lovers, Lovers, lovers in a free fall, lovers in a free fall, lovers in a free fall now. Maybe I, could you hold my glasses for me so I don't try? Thank you. These days, we're all angels to each other, laying our dreams deep in the doom where the dust comes from. Soaring spies of the angel sky, our wings stained with sunrise juice, enjoining in the sluice and tides of revolution, revolution, doing the endurance angel dance, slow and easy flip 
flap, revolutionary lip flap, loop the looping, hoop the hoping, hooping, taking the fancy chances, angels of the ages, resting suspended, coming unmended, angels of the rages, rising through the blood tide, wide sweep, skyline. These days, we're all angels to each other. Thank you. This one is called Don Raga, and it was actually written um, listening to a friend of mine, Michael Siegel, who's a wonderful sitarist, um, who's st studied in India for many years. He teaches over at Cambridge College. and. Um, it's, uh, it's called Don Raga, and as um, the Raga is a very circular Indian musical form, and it's really uh, generally couched in a season or in a time, very much like the haiku. So, Don Raga. The woman discovers dawn in the cup of its breaking, breaking into the sky, a siren, a chant, and even now she knows where she is growing, growing. She has always known the river opens to her, the dawn inside breaking, drawn to the fact of her waking in the cup of her knowing, and she bears with that breaking, which dawn covers downriver, remaking, she moves to the fact of her waking, quickly down in the breath of her making, the sound of dawn down, downriver remaking, the sift and silt of her waking, the sun on her back. She walks with the motion of turning, the spilling of sun in its quaking, the spreading of daylight, the gift, the gift, the gift of the morning. Thank you. September. Look to me and follow the falling of the leaves in the green September morning of my birth month when my mama pushed me forth into the eye of the hurricane. Where do you come from and where do you go? The questions are relentless. The wide ocean gives up, stares up between the long, lean days. The width of it grins, a category outside itself. The warm sun pops onto the deck, nothing fur. Tiv, berries overwhelm, back space into cool days, days. Everything goes on beside itself. Birth, death, Afterbirth, wars, warm fur. You can fly, long wing strokes over meadows, fields left open to the sun, whole days of happiness pressing in. Two deer bob and cottontail, moonshine leaves no traces, foreign faces, graces, disgraces, discovering, recovering the wings, shot, bloodshot, stolen, song today, tomorrow. Mention the mountain lion, the owl, the moose, the mouse, guardians, all guardians. I love you. I have always loved you. Cops in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. There were cops in the kitchen that day. Bigger than bassoons or tubas, they carried my cousin away. They said they had received complaints she chanted. And worse, in a weird, wired language they could not comprehend. 
The men tramped around the premises, switching on the lights, terrifying dust and mice before they found her in the kitchen, chanting up a storm, ways to baffle men or stall the tide or make a stew. And when the cops came in, the mice scampered sideways, the dust billowed, the stew onion swarmed, spilled upon the floor and burned the souls of the cursing men. The cops blew whistles. My cousin laughed and split her sides. The tears ran out to inundate the kitchen of the infidels. Thank you. And uh, I was so happy that um, Cheryl picked this poem of mine. Um, this one called Sidewalk, the Moon, and the Dog, which actually is in the haiku, um, di, 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 da, da, di, 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 da, 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 di, 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 da, da. Sidewalk, the Moon and the Dog. 2 a.m. Paris, we wake and look out window, see scrap of blue moon. Is it an offering? from empty market carving dog's unmuzzled howl? That desolate cry, craving the steppe's wilderness far from French trottoir. The sidewalk whispers, lovely one, nameless one, I breathe you as you are. The sidewalk whispers, lovely one, nameless one, I breathe you as you are. Thank you. Don't have to. And this one is called um, Call. And it really comes from um, living out in Lynn, Massachusetts, where I live now in an old renovated um, shoe factory building. And uh, just kind of looking out on the street and feeling um, the world out there. Call. You can call me Cormorant, and I will call you Stranger. You can call me consonant, and I will call you danger. You can call me accident, and I will call you scar. You can call me galaxy, and I will call you star. We can hold each other like water and rock, like the sidewalk and the moon like my smoke in your fire, like all of this and nothing in the close animal dark. Everything we do and do not do will be the swells rambling over the rocks in Red Rock Park at high tide, or the seagulls veering back and forth, forth and back in front of my three tiers of windows while nomads wander by from the shelter, yelling obscenities at their mates while the ambulances and fire truck sirens offer the jazz of the cities. This tiny drop of time drop ping into the pool, ping surrounded by surrounding circles. If it were possible, we would push away the heavy years and the heavy objects. We would meet each other where the seagulls veer back and forth, forth and back. Solely soul of the soil, we would toil in the name of the lively noun, in the name of the active verb, in the name of the namaste, in the numinous name, in the luminous name, in the numinous, luminous name of love. Thank you. Uh, let's see, and this one um, has kind of a blues feeling to it, and it also um, came during uh, my 
my move from Brookline, Massachusetts, where I lived for 30 years and educated my, brought my daughter up there and uh, out to Lynn. And really, why did I move there? Well, well, it's, I've always been an ocean person, and um, it's minutes away from the ocean. And also, I had done a lot of teaching in many of the schools nearby in many of those different uh, neighborhood communities. Hey, danger, come on in. We're waiting for this dance to begin. Stand close to cutting edge next to safety side. I'll whisper in your inner ear, babe, it's been a seesaw slide riding together with you all of these years through weather and trauma and tussling and tears. Babe, it's been a precarious balancing act moving alongside you, and that's a plain fact. So come on in, darling, and rev up my engine. Some call it poetry. Some call it legend. Come in the front door and eat at my table. Come in the back door, settle down in my stable. Play all of your card tricks and do not deceive me. I'll give you a call back, show you how to receive me. Call up your posse, bring your security. Free fall out of these shadows, out of obscurity. The showdown is soon, the hour is late, the music is blue, the rhythm is fate, the lights are turned down all over the city. Don't show me remorse, regret, or self-pity. I know who you are, and I know what you do. So come on in, come on in, come on in, come on in, darling. I'm waiting for you. <laughs> What? Oh, five minutes. Okay, good. Well, that's good to know. Okay, so I'll, I'll make my choices accordingly. Uh, yeah, this is an important one that I wanted to read. Um, yeah, this is it. So um, this is called a sestina, which is a, a, a it's a woven poem, and uh, they're um, you take the end lines of six words and then you weave them just like a, um, a seamstress into um, the next um, six stanzas. And if you want to see a beautiful Sestina, Google Elizabeth Bishop's a wonderful Sestina. She really was a master of this. And this was about a very, very deep uh, subject. And I kind of wondered, like, how to, for me, um, what could I say? And the, the, easy, the, the way for me that was the best way was to work within a, a very strict kind of form. So it's called refugees, and my words are prepositions, across, between, among, behind, under, and over. Refugees. We move with alacrity across the borders defining us, that contested space between your country and mine. Refugees congested among migrants and refugees pushing fast forward behind multiple war zones and finally diving underground, defying the gravity pull of the situation not over. Did you dare think it was over on your side or mine, between your country or mine, under the explosives and the blaze, among refugees and migrants, sprinting from behind the barricades in flame, and finally free falling across the free fall zone like bloody leaves, free falling across porous borders. No wall will keep us out, we chant as we overcome walls. We refuse to hide 
under, never mind the heated breath of the pack behind you, compressing, expanding the space between you and me, undermining your country and mine as we move among human beings, overwhelmed and suffering, not understanding the imperative of the other's authority. Still, we move underground and begin to tunnel over land, overwhelmed and suffering. We move as a family among your tribe and mine as we recover the drowned and the dragged under, as we keep our vision focused between your country and mine, as we slip out across borders we have not begun to move across, searching out memory and time, overtaking the treacherous path between your country and mine, moving deftly among outstretched arms and waiting buses with closed doors. Under tear gas and razor wire, we are left behind and stranded in strange places we fear, behind makeshift barricades constructed across strangled neighborhoods and bombed out buildings and over on the opposite side of the city among dark figures in a cluster of smoke, we dance between crazy quilt and the new moon, standing under hope and desolation, across borders, under searchlights, carving the space between us, leaving behind shredded flyers, free-falling among torn road maps. We look over, we look over, we look over. Thank you. All right, and then I have a very short one to end, okay? Thank you so much, and thanks again for, um, for inviting me and being here with you this morning. Uh, so uh, this is another, let's see, I think I'm going to do this one called Most Wanted List, and it's for my companion, David Gowdy, who's sitting in the back of the uh, room there. Um, but it was also a Lynn poem, Most Wanted List. Want to circumnavigate the rainbow. Want to let the hummingbird back in. Want to chase the falling leaves still further. Down Market Street, in Central Square, in Lynn. Want to dream with you beside the purple sofa and hold you till the cows come ringing home. Want to watch the gulls fly forth forever in front of tiers of windows where we roam. Want to repeat an old beloved saying. Want to redefine a ragged verse. Want to rejuvenate a stinging story. Want to reinvent a singing curse. City of night, city of sin. We never go out the way we went in. City of light, city begin. We never go out the way we went in. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. And it was a great pleasure to be with you. The impatient black peonies that break April's still stiff soil run down the garden's edge and, announcing themselves at the kitchen window, remind me how I have always looked for you. Our recent reintroduction was a formality, following my empty yearning in search of our last trace. That moment remembered more as space dreamed than time spent. Now, to gather again the fabric of relationship, the threads spun earlier in life, yet woven late, more valued for this waiting. Invited by these unseasonable blooms to enter spring, hesitation seems out of the question. I step outside, 
prod the dark and softening earth and rise to you, rise up to you, to you. Off with porch and parlor light, blinking stars awake, how luminous they are, how bright and close and numerous. I heard a recent radio report, there are millions and millions more stars in our galaxy than ever imagined before, as if dutiful database managers have taken polls throughout history tallies of the ancient astronomers, random samplings of Neanderthals, shaking shaggy heads in wonder, legends of constellations forming animated figures in limited minds. Now myriad new characters wait in the wings, incognito chameleons in disguise. Indeed, our Milky Way veils all kinds of mysteries. Turns out infinity is to be thrown out with the bathwater. Remember when eternity seemed such simple knowledge? Acceptance of the unknown worn like an old shoe? Endlessness stretched out like an elastic band expanding in red shifts? Yet another worldview snaps us back like an indiscriminate reactionary against a void. Our ships disappearing over the edge our cargo, cargo vacuumed up in whirlpools, beginning from the end, bent along a Mobius strip of time, a closed loop system, equating a period with a phase, or another hypothesis, from imploding neuron stars, black holes are born. <laughs> Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get in a $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you.